as of today, January 14th, this, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G is two years old. Now, a lot of phones have come out since then, but is this still good enough to hack it with modern phones in 2023? Let's find out. Hey guys, what's up? If you don't know me, my name is Adam, AKA Drone Dad on YouTube and Instagram. We're gonna go ahead and review this phone. I'm gonna tell you what I like, what I don't like, and we're just gonna get into it. We're not, we're not gonna do an unboxing or anything like that. I'm not gonna go over the specs of the screen or the battery, things like that. We're just gonna go over performance and how I liked it or didn't like it. So let's get on into it. So as I said before, it has been exactly two years since the release of the S21 Ultra 5G. This is it, I got the silver one. As you can see, it's kind of bouncing off some of the background I have in the rest of the room. So it, if you don't have the case on it, it kind of illuminates whatever color bounces off of it. So I kind of like that aspect of the silver. Comes in other colors, but this was the one that I chose. If you're looking for a camera to save a little bit of money that's a little bit older, maybe a year or two old, this is a great phone for that. And more than anything, this is a photographer's camera. The camera on here is really great. The S21, S22, those are really known for their cameras. They do a great job. There is actually a 100 times digital zoom on this camera. That's what I enjoyed the most. It's actually what I'm going to miss most about this as I'm starting to upgrade the phone. And I know what you're thinking. If it's such a great phone, why are you upgrading? Well, that's a very good question. I actually multitask a lot with my phones. So I'm actually upgrading to the Z Fold 4. I really love having the bigger screen. That's just me. Some people multitask, some people don't. So that's just me. But again, this is a great phone. Um, I have no reason to tell you if it was or wasn't, but I really enjoyed the phone. It just wasn't quite big enough and it couldn't have multiple apps open at the same time in the way that I liked. You can, to a certain degree, have more than one app open at a time with the S21 Ultra, but not the way I wanted to. Being fully transparent there, there's nothing wrong with the phone that I'm getting rid of it. It just couldn't do the exact thing that I wanted it to do, which was be a bigger screen. But as I was saying, the camera on here is insane. I'm gonna throw some pictures up right now to show some photos that I took of the moon. These are not edited. They are just zoom, point, and shoot on the phone. Phenomenal that a phone that sits in our pocket can do this. In order for a camera to make a shot like this, even 10 years ago, would have been a thousands and thousands of dollars. So it's incredible that something this small and portable can take shots like that. The video was great. This was also my secondary camera on top of the one that I'm shooting on right now. If I needed B-roll or slow motion, I would use this because this slow motion is actually better than the slow motion on the camera that I'm using now, which is the DJI Pocket 2. I'll have a review on that one later if you're interested in that. Another good thing about this phone is screen size. Now as phones go, this is a pretty big screen compared to other phones. Now I know they're all getting bigger and wider and that's kind of what we want. The only downside that a lot of people complain about is if you're using it handheld, it's kind of hard. If you're holding it like this and balancing it, it's kind of hard to really get, like I could, I could type something over here, but it's, it's kind of hard and it's a balancing act and you're kind of you're putting a lot of strain on your wrist here. However, there is a workaround. I don't know if you know this about Samsung phones, but if you double tap the home button, it now makes it smaller. It makes the screen smaller. I'll get a screenshot of that. And what that allows you to do is now the entire screen is easily where your thumb can reach. And if you want to, you know, I'm right-handed, but if you're left-handed, you can just hit this arrow and now it's over on the left side and you can use your left hand. Uh, if you're holding it a certain way, you can hold this thing up at the top and move it to the top of the screen, however you want to do it. And just get back to the normal screen. You just double tap that home button again two times and it goes right back. So that was really handy for me because I know sometimes if I was laying in bed at night or if I was doing something, I could only use one hand. Sometimes it was really hard to hit the keys or the buttons on the far side of the phone. So again, it's a little bit big for that, but all in all, it was a really good phone for typing because it does have that wider screen than a lot of the phones before it. I would say if you had really small hands, you definitely wanna use the uh, one-handed version. Now, as far as microphone, we're gonna do a microphone test. I have the um, my DJI microphone, my wireless microphone on here on my shirt. And so this is the audio now coming from the wireless microphone on the DJI Pocket 2. And now this is going to be the audio coming from the phone itself. And 
still not too bad. It may be better. This is, you know, seven or eight inches away from my face, whereas this microphone is right under my chin. So if I go ahead and move this, now you're getting a really ugly shot of my eye. However, you can hear that this microphone's still doing pretty well. So again, this would be a normal like selfie, like vlogging style distance. And you can see it's, it, it's framed well. You can see my basement <laughs> because that's what my office is, just a basement. So I can do like this here where I'm still in the frame. So this is a pretty normal uh, vlogging shot. And you can see that I have the DJI microphone here. This is that audio. And then you can also now hear the audio coming straight from the S21 Ultra. Not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. The next thing I really liked about this phone is the water resistance. I'm going to go ahead and put the water resistance right here on the screen. I can tell you right now that I have used this underwater many times, whether in the swimming pool or just in the, you know, I did one video in the bathtub. Um, I wasn't in the bathtub, but I was getting underwater shots of like a kid's toy or something like that. And, um, or I would have running water going over it for a video, whatever it is, uh, or out in the rain. I have had it under the water for quite some time. I'll, if I can find it, I'll show some of that footage from one of them being in my, my gym swimming pool. Nobody else was in the pool. Don't worry, but it worked just fine. I put it on an octopus tripod and I clamped it onto the side of the pool, hit record, jumped in. So it worked fine. Um, especially with the OtterBox, this was a really good case. Um, for stuff like that. Only one time did I ever get the message, if water does get inside the charging port, it'll just tell you, hey, there's water in the charging port. You can't plug it in right now. If it happens, you still can use the wireless charging on the back. So if you can't physically plug in the cord until it dries out, you can still charge it. It's, it's not a deal breaker. All you really have to do is just blow in it like it's a Super Nintendo cartridge. And most of the time that'll be enough for it to dry out and then you can charge it, but it'll beep at you. If you plug it in and it says, whoa, there's water in here. It's not going to end of the world. It just won't charge and you could damage it if you left it in. So it's a good idea to unplug it, wait for it to dry out. But again, that only happened to me once the entire time that I had this phone and I really tested it out in the water. So it did pretty well. The next thing everybody cares about in a phone is battery life. And for how graphics intensive this is and the processing that it does for photos and things, it is a really impressive battery. Most of the time, I use this pretty heavily, most of the time I could get a full day on one charge and that's watching Netflix, watching YouTube, you know, editing video before. I used to use this for my video editing before I moved to the computer. I put my phones through a lot. I, I really tax them a lot and this thing did everything I wanted it to do with no problems, no stuttering, no lag, nothing like that. It really handled it quite well. I was pretty impressed. But yeah, that's basically it in a nutshell. There's no point in belaboring this video and making it super long because you're just here for a quick review to see whether or not you like the phone. And overall, I give it a thumbs up. This phone being two years old to the day, when compared to other phones that I've used myself or that friends and family around me, this phone still performs exactly how I would expect a new phone to perform. And it's often, it's superior to the phones that I see being used by friends and family. If you do wanna try out this phone for yourself, I do have an affiliate link down in the description. You can go ahead and click that and that helps out the channel by clicking that link. I really appreciate it. Yeah, if you've got any questions, go ahead and post it in the comments below. I will be happy to answer those if I have an answer. But again, I put this through the ringer, so I most likely have the answer for you on how well it performed. Anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Go ahead and click over here to see what kind of video of mine YouTube would suggest for you to like. And you can go ahead and click over here to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much. I hope you found value in this. I'll see you later. Love you. Bye.